And if I might invite uh, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy uh, to be the next speaker. Very good to see you and um, you know, very privileged to be among so many extremely academic, intelligent and ac accomplished people from uh, youth like Rachel's to um, you know, happening initiatives like Dr. Indubhushan spoke about and uh, inspiring and uh, appropriate advice from Dr. Kota. I think this has been a, a truly, you know, well put together initiative. So basically, I think the future of healthcare is right now, it's time for everyone interested in the healthcare services to fasten their seatbelts. The stage is set for a very quick journey. The first thing I'd like to say is that the onus of care, which was originally on maybe the general practitioner or a barefoot doctor or, uh, you know, then moved into larger hospitals because the high-end diagnostics and the whole owner shifted there. We're now seeing that care is moving from the hospital to the clinic, from the clinic to the home and from the home to a 24 by seven ubiquitous access to care, which is enabled by the mobile phone. But more importantly, the onus of healthcare is shifting to the individual. So not only are hospitals looking for more patient-centric care, but individuals are getting more educated, more aware, and more proactive about prevention, about understanding what is the medication, what is the dosage, what is the precursor to this illness, and therefore, how do I prevent uh, this scenario? And this entire shift or journey is being accelerated by the use of technology, whether it's uh, virtual consults, you can stay at home and see your doctor, your mobile phone is now almost a clinic. Uh, and during COVID, I think the, the range of teleconsults grew by almost 500 times. But uh, besides the virtual visit is the second level of care, which is the remote care. And in remote care, I, I think that, you know, whether it is devices, your ability to monitor your grandmother at home, for NRIs to be able to monitor what's happening to their parents and knowing that a doctor is also overseeing them is the next level and a range of devices we're working with. Actually, you know, in uh, the Apollo Telehealth team, we saw last week that we had an analyzed 389 devices uh, and chosen a few, maybe 10, 12 of them, but also created a platform layer or an integration so that from the hospital or the doctor's clinic or inside, uh, you can link all this. The, the next and I think uh, extremely important point in this entire transition is the fact that uh, with devices, with teleconsults, with so much data, with genomics uh, and this connectivity, we are now being deluged by this huge amount of data. So the ability to take that data and meaningfully and significantly interpret that data so typically healthcare providers or uh, doctors or scientists took the data, analyzed and presented papers on trends, on efficacy and, and Rachel's, I was so happy to see him speak about it, but just, you know, the whole analytics of how does this medicine work on a monkey? How does it work in trials? So the evolution of healthcare uh, in terms of analyzing data, seeing the implications of use of a certain drug were all done in a prospective man that is um, actually sorry in a you know res, uh, retrospective or reactive manner today with real-time monitoring data and the new fantastic player in the game artificial intelligence we will take the knowledge of doctors integrated with the data that's being received and proactively real-time feed into the healthcare system so these are the three shifts which are moving into what is the, the future of healthcare, which is extremely driven by digital. And machines will be built indigenously, their costs will come down, drug discovery will accelerate, there'll be more fantastic things like was spoken about, Bharat Biotech and others. And the, but the most important aspect of all this is I think that the entire nature of healthcare is shifting to truly being healthcare and not sick care. Because when we're looking proactively, rather than looking in the rear view mirror of what happened five years ago, 10 years ago, or six months ago, we're proactively saying, if you have these precursors, if you have these conditions, 
because of the hundreds and thousands of patients we've analyzed, we can look in the front and say, in three months and six months, this could happen to you, therefore prevent it today. So this is almost like a, a Google roadmap saying turn right, turn left. It's going to take you six months to do that. And there's tra traffic over here. That means that you're getting this cardiac block, bypass this cardiac block and go a different route. That means reduce your weight, take your beta blockers, ensure you don't have the heart attack and go smoothly down a new road. This is the, the fantastic shift which is happening. And for this, to enable this outstanding shift, which is being driven by biology, the genome, by bytes, which is analytics and data and AL, and by um, bandwidth, which is connectivity. So we can take this knowledge and this capability, not just in you know, the advanced countries or the large cities of India, where tremendous care is happening and Indian ecosystems are creating care on par with the best in the world. But using bandwidth, we can take this to the last mile the smallest village, to the most untouched populations and help them stay healthier. And that is really the most powerful thing which is happening. Because today in India, you know, what is the most painful thing is that when you see a cardiac patient, you're opening up three vessels or four vessels, you're doing three bypasses, six bypasses. And the question the doctors are asking in their heart is, where was this patient when his first vessel got blocked? Why didn't we screen him? And the same is happening for cancer. We're seeing 62% of our cancer patients in stage three and stage, stage four. How can we find these people in stage one so that the cost to care is less, the pain of treatment is less, and most importantly, the mortality and the morbidity is lower. And these are the lessons being learned. These are the frameworks or the building blocks or the foundations which are happening. And Dr. Indubhushan said it, the best um, in terms of the entire work of the government. And I think the time has come most beautifully for public and private to work together, for doctors and scientists and engineers to work together, and for people and medically enlightened uh, institutions and society to work together so that we build a healthier future we break some of the earlier paradigms. For years and years and years, we said we need more doctors in India. Our current doctor ratio is under 2,000 per population. And everybody from government to private went ahead and put in more medical colleges, enhanced the number. But you know what? Today, we may not need 1,000 doctors per, patient, per population because the entire onus of care has shifted to individuals and society. The role doctors will play will be more proactive, more creative, more involved in, you know, primary uh, prevention or in, a, you know, on the treatment and prevention. So the parameters and the paradigms and the measurement indexes are all going to change in the next few years because of these new tools and more importantly, the new tools, the new enlightenment, the true healthcare is proactive and preventive. And um, I think I have a minute or two left. So I'll quickly share with you how these thought processes can be applied into an ecosystem. And I'll talk about it in the current context of COVID. Uh, I just, just raise your hand even when you want me to stop. Uh, in COVID, what we looked at was a 360 degree response to COVID at Apollo. So first we, we put out our app. So the app has almost you know, we had about 13 million downloads during this time period, but about 18 million people took the health risk scan for COVID. And through that, they were triaged. Who can stay at home? Who needs to take medicine? Whose uh, oxygen saturation levels are dropping and need to move into a hospital? So the whole, the, the onus of the care or the monitoring came to the individual. We created two important initiatives, which was stay isolated at home. So home care with a telemedicine layer, and then we partnered with hotels like Oyo and Lemon Tree and said in India, people may not be able to isolate at home where six or seven people stay in you know, one room, share a bathroom or two rooms and share a bathroom. So we brought these low cost staying uh, you know, kind of infrastructures, put telemedicine on top of them and took care of patients. So in addition to the 2,100 beds that we added, these were high end, almost a thousand were ICU beds. We were able to add 5,000 other stay facilities and then opened up to the home. 
So this type of changing the paradigms, using innovation, having an underlying technology layer, and then comes the fantastic aspect of high-end care and research using the best in the world. So we spoke to international doctors, et cetera, put out a protocol. When do you use remdesivir? How do you use uh, you know, the uh, steroids? If you're using blood thinners, what are the things you have to be careful of so that you, you, know, you may uh, prevent the clot, but you may also uh, lead someone to a bleed in the brain. Where is the fine balance? And this was used not just in an Apollo hospitals ecosystem, but we shared this with nursing homes, with others who were also treating patients. So knowledge using technology, tech enabled training and healthcare. We trained almost 14 lakh people on COVID and then went on to create a, a ventilator training program using content simulation and a buddy system with the Critical Care Society of India. So there was a one-on-one -on -one mentoring for first time users of ventilator. And the scale and the speed of this was all happening two, three months, real time transformation. So this is why I said at the very beginning, the journey that healthcare is getting on now, you just need to fasten your seatbelts, keep your minds, your thoughts, your ears and eyes open and always stay, stay centered on keeping the patient healthy and if they get sick, using every tool possible and every partnership possible to make them get better quickly and retain that data so that tomorrow you will enable hundreds and thousands of other patients to get better because of the knowledge and the introspection that happens into every clinical journey. So finally, my vision of a future of healthcare is accessible to all. We have universal care from village to city, from mountain to beach shore, everyone. My second thought for healthcare is that it's not just accessible, but it's affordable, uh, that it's humane, patient-friendly, technology-driven. And finally, I think that India is going to play a very significant role on the global stage of healthcare, because we can, using teleservices, using our clinical capability, using our great training, our doctors and our nurses, a young India can help take care of a green world. And this is, I think, most significantly what all of us are looking for. And finally, it's all about people, it's all about the heart, and it's about doing it together. So all the very best. Congratulations to all you fantastic people for putting this together. Namaste. Um, thank you, Sangeeta. Every time I listen to you, uh, what becomes very obvious to me is you take a very far reaching vision and then you tie it down to some very, very specific practical problems, both in your own approach to your work and what you've achieved at Apollo, they are mirror images of each other. So thank you very much.